Hello, music lovers. Welcome to the Token Music Podcast. My name is Justin Shea, co-founder and CEO of Token Music. And today we have a very special guest joining us. Uh, Bram Ove, artist, producer, and manager from Dallas, Texas. Brandon, how about you take it away and give us a little introduction? What's up? Um, thank you, Justin, for having me. Yes, uh, so I go by the name of Bram Ove. I'm an artist, uh, music producer, graphic designer, Everything under the sun. You know, just (laughs) kind of man of many hats. Um, But yeah, so I've been doing um, music for quite a minute now. And um, I'm originally from Dallas, Texas, but I'm also based in L.A., I'd say. And right now I'm in New York uh, for a show. Um, But yeah, that's that's the summary. Yeah, and and we're definitely going to go through and chat about that show a little because I know that's been that's been in the works for a while. Um, yeah. But starting off, just a couple uh, light questions. How do you get into music? Yeah, so I mean, it started off as a hobby, like anything else. Um, in in like middle school, it was with fr- a bunch of friends and I. We would like make a lot of our own stuff, whether it be like trading cards, um, like films. And so music was just another one of those things. Yeah. And I found myself getting more serious about it and learning how to produce came as like, I really just love the, the world building aspect of making a song and like how um, the el- different elements come together to yeah. create something holistic. So like producing was kind of like what introduced, what really fascinated me at first. And I think, as time went on, I got better at like rapping and singing. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so I, I dropped my first project uh, freshman year of uh, college back in 2017. And I've just been building from there. Yeah. And and early on, you had connections to like Erica Badeau and some bigger artists. I know like Umi as well. Um, how'd that like shape shape your career? Uh, well, Miss Erica has been before I even thought of making music, you know, she's been a part of the village that kind of I've, I've learned so much from and, and grown up in growing up in Dallas, you know, so I'm like really good friends with her son, Seven. And we were we were in a band together in high school. So there was a lot like she would see the early beginnings of like what we were making. And then as time went on, I was kind of the one to stick with it and be more serious about it. So that like that, um, it's been like a mentorship as as well as just like a, a motherly like influence over also just big music influence. Like I really rediscovered her music for my own, when I went away for college and that was that was something crazy too so yeah shout out to her she's <laughs> always gonna be <laughs> always gonna be a big uh big influence on the trajectory of my career and yeah started. yeah and 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 I I know you had that show with her like earlier this year this this whole year has been pretty huge for you a feature on the uh on the reboot for a Fresh Prince, per, on like performing yeah. at South by Southwest, the uh, the Erica Badeau show, the the uh, New York show, which which show we're gonna get into uh, right now. Actually, how is how has that experience been? You're you're actually in New York, right? Yeah, so I just got here. We are in an Airbnb in New York, um, in Brooklyn. Um, it's been it's been a big undertaking, like just. Yeah, it's it's been it's been a challenge, but I I think it's it's the right timing, you know, and uh, I'm really excited like to yeah. see what, you know, just to see what happens. It's my first time playing my music out here, so. <laughs> yeah, and you're a and you're a great performer too. I I I've seen your you. um um on all your videos and and I really want to go to one of the shows sometime soon. So, yeah, yeah. Um I guess moving into like the next round of questions. Um how did you end up transitioning from artist to manager? Because I know that you brought on uh, Jackie Faye and another 
artist pretty recently. So how has that transition been starting to like, because it's, it seems like you, you, you've been managing yourself for a while, but now starting to manage other artists. How has that been? Yeah, it's been really interesting. It's been, um, I wouldn't call it new territory because I've definitely been managing myself. You know? It's been really cool to, as I'm like hitting the next stages, taking a step back and building up again with somebody who I, I really believe in. And yeah, it's just like when certain things click and, and make sense in a, in a working relationship, it's like, it's more work to not do it than, yeah. you, know, than to, <laughs> you know, it just makes so much sense and we benefit. Um, uh, we learn from each other really. Like, yeah, that's, that's what it is. So it's like, uh, um, I like to think of her as my Padawan, but, uh, <laughs> you know, she's, she's, she's more than that. She's like an artist in her own right. And yeah. I'm just, um, this is the phase where I'm like helping her kind of, um, move through that and navigate that space as I had to do. So yeah. Jedi Brandon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah nice. And yeah. And, and I love to see that too. Uh, we actually just recently brought on uh jackie Fay, i love her style I, it did i'm like n- when you mentioned it that one time i was like definitely reminds me of audrey nuna um yeah. and we should definitely bring her on for for um like an episode soon because she's uh yeah she's she's pretty awesome um mm-hmm. and yeah so uh you are a great designer uh and i want to know more um on how important uh it was to learn and grow from your other mediums of art. Um, if you were an artist that didn't have those abilities that, that like you have, uh, what would you recommend for them? Like, would you recommend them to develop or dive into their art skills, dive into graphic designs or possibly handing it off to someone else? Like how would, how would you navigate that, uh, kind of in, if you weren't in the position that you're in now? Yeah. Well, I I would say everybody, everybody has something, you know, um, every, every artist has like some kind of skill outside of music that could be leveraged as like an advantage, whether it's like, you're a really good people person or you know how to code, for example, you know, there's, there's a lot of different, um, intersections with, with music because music touches almost every other. Yeah facet of whatever you know so <laughs> I, I just happen to be a very visual person and um, graphic design is something like I have always had a love for and an appreciation for so yeah I've, I've kind of been able to use that to my advantage um, but honestly it can also be a disadvantage um, because when you know how to do a lot of things yourself, you end up spending a lot of time doing those things. So it's, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, w- I would also just warn against like, you know, the music comes first and when, when other people can, when you have the space to, you know, the yeah. resources to dedicate that to somebody else, I would definitely suggest that as well. But yeah, everybody has a skill that can be used yeah. and, um, I think you just need to think about like, okay, how could this help me in music? Yeah. And a lot of artists that I've chatted with have a hard time with pri- um, like prioritizing their time because a lot of them do have to have that side job um, or that or that extra hustle that makes them the money. Um, and with like limited time or even like without limited time, how would you manage or like how do you manage your time um, like as an artist? Um, the best I can. I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I I think it's you, you learn every day how to how to do that better. But um, yeah, I think to me, there's it's it's so much about like what phase you're in of, yeah. of your kind of of your journey, and then also of just like like release cycle. Like, are you in the studio right now, like really cranking out ideas? Are you in like promotional mode? And yeah. 
so much of managing your time is switching between those those yeah. modes, but also um, you want to probably establish like consistent routines, like things to make sure you're ready for the next show, you know, to make sure you're staying on top of like your pin game and getting better. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a lot of different um, routines you can implement, but being able to switch gears is like, it's, it's pretty crucial and yeah. it, it's, it's tiring at times because it's like, I'm not in, I'm not in promo mode all the time, you know, but that's, that's what is like required of you at certain times. So. Yeah. And, and, and one thing that I've seen from you in terms of um, just like prior on like prioritizing your time and your energy is in making sure that you have that, that like connection to like your fan base. You're very consistent on um, like responding on, on like Instagram um, and, and posting. And uh, when you were in that like promotional era of like, of like hips talk, that was, that was definitely a, like very into TikTok, and then you got like twenty thousand followers, which is huge. Yeah. Um, and and that song uh, did did amazing. But uh, when you're looking at your career or just the music industry as a whole, what what problems have you faced as an artist? Uh, and what would you say are, I guess, fundamental problems in the music industry? Oh. Man, well, I think I face the problem of metrics that are so often um, put on artists' work and how how disconnected that is from like the actual quality, the actual time spent. Um, I feel like early on, it's it's a lot easier not to care about or maybe to even get discouraged about the metrics. But um, like as, as things grow and as like you really try to think of this as a business, it's all, it's all about the numbers, you know? And I feel like that's within the industry, that's going to be, that's, that's always something hard to balance out. It's like, I got to be business minded about my art. Um, and that requires like looking at the metrics. Cause I was thinking the other day, it's like Spotify streams aren't, will never be an accurate metric on how many people like a song, how many people enjoy the song, how good the song is. It's more accurate a metric to judge maybe like how well you promoted a song or how, how far reaching the song is but you know it's it's like it doesn't measure the impact of the art or the quality or how much it meant to the artist and um it's just so easy to get those things confused um but that's definitely you know inherently what comes with the industry yeah. i i would say one of the biggest problems um that i hope i don't i don't know if it's a problem or not i just think that things are a lot faster pace now and it's 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 really hard at times to tell myself to just slow down and like you know slow down and just like what what comes yeah. to me you know what what comes will come and I gotta like slow down and make sure that this is yeah this is what it needs to be you know yeah because like skipping yeah. steps is detrimental um and and you don't want to skip like even even like the the just like minute things like um like regularly posting or or going out and and, and creating those connections or um just spending extra time on things that a lot of times artists forget about because a lot of times you do need to have that marketing that like promotion that business mindset on the back end and i i, I think what you said i i, I think you phrased it perfectly balancing that is is difficult and is definitely a struggle that a lot of independent artists especially have to face because when you're a part of a record label um you're 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 at least lucky enough to pass that part off to someone else regardless of the giant cut you have to give um but it's it's definitely um it's definitely a struggle yeah um and and thanks for phrasing it like that um and how would you see these problems like getting resolved i mean i i know a lot of them are our personal problems um, that like 
individual artists have to face. So whether it be um, as an individual artist, like how would you tackle them? Or as a whole, how should the industry change to kind of have that change be met? I think if there as much technology and innovation that's being done in in and around the music industry, if there were a way to measure the like the impact of a song on a person yeah and to then compensate the artist based upon that instead of based upon like the sheer number of something because i could have five streams and that's nothing but those five streams could have been people who discovered my music for the first time and their lives were changed, you know? And they could, they think about something in their life completely different because of that song. Or I, even with YouTube videos, it takes so many views to, to get a cent. But I, I could watch somebody's live performance on YouTube and that could be the one thing I needed to hear in that moment. So I just I just wonder if there's like with all the technology that is, you know, Spotify basically knows what you want to hear when you want to hear, you know, yeah. if, if there's a way to like measure that and art for artists to be compensated for like the actual impact that they make on on their listeners yeah. instead of just like the volume of the listeners, then I think that would. Yeah. And, and I think that that bleeds perfectly into the next round of questions. Um, uh, you recently joined token music. Uh, we're going to be releasing a song pretty soon. Um, and before I go on my spiel, um, (laughs) just, just on how we are focusing on changing this part of the industry, um, building deeper connections between our artists and fans, getting them compensated based off those connections rather than the metrics like you were talking about. Um, uh, why did you join Token Music? Um, what, what? Because I know that we had a couple like meetings leading up to that. But what, what was like the thought process? Um, because I know that you were chatting and you were trying to figure it out on like the future of, of the music industry. Like, where is it headed? Um, did that kind of aspect of compensation have a role in it? Um, in in terms of like the problems that Spotify has compensating artists, um, or were there any other factors at play? Um, yeah, there, there was a lot of factors. I think I was thinking at the time, like with where my career is at, I definitely want to be looking ahead and hopping on like the, the changes of the music industry early on. And I I just started doing research into like web three, um, cryptocurrencies and how, how it could influence the, the music industry moving forward. And I got really interested in that in that space um and i think when i thought about doing something as an independent artist um with what i was learning it just token was like right in step with my exact thought process as to like how i could take advantage of um where everything is moving um as far as the internet and just like how how the music industry could change in the future. So I think it, it really made sense to me then um, to hop on and to, you know, like at least try new things and be a part of like um, something new in the industry that just hasn't been done before. Uh, I think it's a really cool opportunity. So yeah, that's basically. Yeah. What's yeah. Cool. And, and I, I, I remember one of the biggest things that we did chat about was like I, I guess tapping into that super fan aspect. I mean because because being like I, I mean like like the compensation on Spotify and and Apple Music is minuscule, but it is the best that it can be. Well, when you're looking at balancing um, a business model where you want to have users on board, but you need to get artists compensated, users are going to come first because without the users, you're not going to have like any compensation to give to the artists. Um, right. and, and, and like they're like, when, when I look at the music industry, there are deeply rooted problems. Um, but at the same time, these, these problems are there for a reason. It's not like, 
you can say, oh, uh, um, 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 my streaming services pay me more. And then it'll, and, and it'll just happen because that's not how it works. There like is a balance to, to how this ecosystem functions um, in terms of providing that capital necessary for, um, for the artists to live. And it, it just doesn't right now. Um, but what we're trying to do is open up that door and enable artists like you um, and any other independent artists out there to get them the revenue and the money they they deserve from their yeah. like directly from their fans and I, I think like the biggest part is enabling their fans to actually get something alongside of it because when you're looking at nfts and i'd i love to hear more about like how that research went but when you're looking at nfts there is no value behind that which is why a lot of artists are skeptical going into it because it looks like a kind of like a money grab from like their fans um how do you feel about that in, in terms of like in terms of like the artists that have released like nfts how is how how have you seen that as an artist in this space um well it's it's really easy to see it as something that like oh well of course a big artist can do that because they can they already have like you know the um, the backing and the audience to make that, that type of thing work i really think that it's a it's a chance for for artists to take their art more seriously early on and um, really find out who their supporters are earlier on. Yeah, and um, I think it's it's something that I am still. It's an idea that I'm still getting used to. Honestly, is like the thought of people caring enough to invest in me is still. It's still wild, and I feel like independent artists are kind of like the the mindset is forced upon us that like oh we don't matter until we blow up you know we don't we don't really matter nobody cares in a sense and there's people who who care along the way that just might not express it that might not um, that might not tell you every opportunity might not even talk to you. But should there be an opportunity, you know, like they would, um, you know, support you. So it's it's those type of things that like would really keep independent artists going. And if they if they were able to like really monetize and really like connect to those type of supporters earlier on. But um, yeah, it's just like yeah. anything else. I think it it has a long way to go to be like, you know, a full fledged, like, yeah, option for a lot of, for a lot of independent artists. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and that's really just what we, um, like what, like what we're focusing on building. Um, and I think that about closes it, um, with, with everything. I have one final question for you before we, uh, before we close off. Um, if, if you could invest in one artist right now, uh, who would that be? Looking at um, oh. possibly their 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 potential, if they're an underground artist and you feel like they have the potential to blow up, or maybe a larger artist that you feel like would be a really like however you want to take it. <laughs> um, who would you invest in? Ah, uh, that's a dope question. Um, man, I would say. <laughs> I would say probably my friend Flozig. Yeah. Yeah, I would I would invest in him. He's good. Um yeah. Yeah, partially because I've heard what's coming. I'm like, okay, it's it's good. I, I, yeah, <laughs> I like this direction. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, it would have to be one of the homies, I think. Um Yeah. Yeah, but I've definitely thought about that like artists that I found early on that Dang, if I could have invested. Yeah. In, yeah. <laughs> I all and, and and you know like that's kind of what started too. It's because I had, I had that thought for years. I was like, I'm always finding like underground artists, like what like on on like two thousand monthly streams, and then they take off. And you're like, what mm. what an opportunity, you know? Yeah. Um, and yeah, yeah, I guess that we're opening up that opportunity. And just to and just to close off for for everyone, if you haven't already. Uh, followed our socials check out our twitter our telegram um, our medium everything is going to be linked below if you want to check out this podcast on youtube uh, that is going to be available as well 
And yeah, uh, that'll be about it for today. Thank you for listening and have a great rest of your day.